Eighth Man DVD. Shopping for our Thanksgiving vittles. I hear your bow's coming to eat with us. I ain't got no bow. Your pa says so. Mr. Drysdale's stepson. You know, the one they call uh, Sonny. Sure, fine. Never even seen him. The <laughs> way your pa tells it, he's coming to court you and spark you. What does that mean? <laughs> you don't know what uh, courting and sparking is? No. No, I guess you wouldn't at that. Well, when I get back, you and me better have a little talk. Have you ever been courted in Spark, Granny? Honey? <laughs> when I was a girl back in Tennessee, I set so many boys' hearts on fire that they took to calling that neck of the woods the Smoky Mountains. <laughs> well, see you later. <laughs> Daisy, you old heartbreaker. <laughs> you still got it. That's the truth. <laughs> Who are you stepping out with? Ain't stepping out with nobody. I'm going to the supermarket. What's a supermarket? I don't know. I reckon it's kind of like a general store. But that's where you have to go to buy your vittles out here. And there's some things I need for that Thanksgiving spread. Oh, say, speaking of Thanksgiving, we can use the big fancy eating table. I just finished notching the last pot passer. You think they'll reach? Yeah, I don't know. Let's give him a try. Jethro! Yeah, Granny? You all set to get took to the supermarket? No, not yet. Fetch me a pot to the fancy eating room. Yes, sir. Mmm, that sure is a mighty fine eating table. <laughs> in a pot. Granny, you gotta admit, folks built this table sure knowed what they were doing. It is built solid. It is that. You could set a half dozen turkey gobblers on there and never sag it a bit. This, this here is a dandy idea, especially if you got young ones at the table. The plates won't slip off on the floor. Yeah, I've sure scrubbed up a mess of pone and sorghum. Bet nobody ever scrubbed up none from this floor. There's been plenty spilled on the table, though. Sorghum? Something sticky. I can't get that green tablecloth off there. Save me. <laughs> Stuck on me? I can't imagine anybody to lay a clean tablecloth on a sticky table. Yeah, Granny, I reckon all women ain't as thick a span as you are when it comes to keeping house. Here you are, Granny. Set it in the middle of the table so we'll see if these pot passers reach. Yeah, I reckon that'll do the trick, all right. Jed, 
Maybe you better whittle some sharp points on a few of them, and then we can spear the meat and pass it. <laughs> Good idea, Granny. I'll do that. Uh, how do you reckon the folks that lived here before us passed things? Well, they probably had a big family and passed from hand to hand. <laughs> that reminds me, we're having five for our Thanksgiving meal. Yeah, you already told me. Company coming? Extra special company. Ellie's bow. Has Ellie got a bow? She sure has. Mr. Drysdale's step boy, Sonny. Him and Ellie ain't never seen each other yet. Sonny and his ma just come in from Boston. But Mr. Drysdale says his boy will be just happy to come a court, Ellie. I won't, I won't. I have never submitted to a blind date before, and I refuse to do it now. <laughs> Sonny, dear, do it just as once for your daddy. He's it not is. my daddy. He's your husband. All right, then. Do it for stepdaddy. <laughs> it seems to mean a great deal to him. Mother, I'm the most popular man on the campuses of three universities. Vassar, Wellesley, and Smith. <laughs> for those girls, I'm an idol. Be worshipped. I can't just date anyone. <laughs> Sonny, dear, it might be fun to date someone new. Someone young, and lovely, and charming. For her, yes. <laughs> but how do I know what she'll look like? No, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. It might cause too much of a trauma, Mama. <laughs> but your stepdaddy says she's very attractive. And it seems that she's the daughter of his wealthiest depositor, whom he wishes very much to please. Mother! What kind of a man have you married? He's selling me for a rich man's gold. It's sordid! Oh, it is sordid! It is sordid! No, my precious baby. I know it was wrong of me to marry a common bank president, but I wanted you to have everything, and all I could give you was the heritage of a fine old family. But it takes money, too, darling. Money, I hate that word makes the rich the social equal of us. Oh, no, dear. He could never do that. I wish you'd read the thesis I wrote on economics last week, money and why it is not important. You know, for a boy who's been going to college for 17 years, you haven't learned much. Milburn, you must not throw it up to Sonny that he keeps going to college. He's trying to find himself. Don't take my advice. Don't look. <laughs> Come on, dear. Let Sonny get dressed for his date. I'll draw him a nice hot bath. Try not to drown. <laughs> Daddy? Just a moment, Daddy. You called me Daddy. You've never done that before. Well, don't ever do it again. <laughs> I refuse to date a strange girl just to benefit your economic situation. Well, I've got news for you, Sonny. My economic situation and your economic situation have a very definite relationship. Money doesn't interest me. Who steals my purse? steals trash. Well, you will have a date with Ellie Mae Clampett and you'll be nice to her or I'll cut off every penny of your trash. Milburn, <laughs> did I hear you say that it's the Clampett girl you're asking Sonny to date? That's right. But my dear, I haven't finished the genealogical check of their family tree. We don't know that Ellie Mae is socially acceptable for Sonny. Good heavens. Now, you listen to me, Sonny. Jed Clampett is thrilled at the prospect of his daughter having a date with you. A city boy. Educated, refined. To him, you're a knight in shining armor, a handsome Prince Charming. He thinks you're the greatest thing that could ever happen to his daughter. Mr. Clampett sounds like a very intelligent man. Oh, dear, I've heard the most disturbing reports about the Clampets. I understand they're no better than peasants. Good heavens, a date with a girl like that is unthinkable. <laughs> now, Margaret, I hesitate to assert my authority. But unless I have assurance that my wishes will be carried out, I'm afraid I will have to... Mother! Dad! Who is that? Who is she? Who is what, dear? That divine creature by the pool next door. <laughs> You're sensational. Of course I'll date her. Good boy. But, Sonny, she's not a blue blood. 
The color may not be right, Mother, but I sure dig that crazy container. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wrong! Granny, you wearing perfume? Pure vanilla extract. You rascal. You gonna have that storekeeper's head just to spin it. That's the idea. Just because I got plenty of money don't mean I have to spend it all. Howdy, Paul. What you doing? Oh, I'm fixing some turkey stickers for a company meal. Oh, we'll say, Ellie, uh... Yes, Paul? Is there anything you don't know about the birds and the bees? No. How come you to ask? Well, I reckon he's what Sonny Drysdale's been studying at school. Either that or he's partial to him. How'd you know? Well, when I mentioned to Miss Hathaway that uh, you was going to be keeping company with Sonny Drysdale, she says, uh, Mr. Clampett, she says, uh, you better have a talk with your daughter about the birds and the bees. Shucks, I know all about the little critter. Well, that's why I figured you being raised in the woods and all. But I didn't let on to Miss Hathaway. I know she's just trying to be helpful. Granny says she's going to have a talk with me about courting and sparking. She is. Well, I'm glad of that, Ellie. I was kind of wondering who was going to do that. Paul, why don't you tell me about courting and sparking? Well, Ellie, that's something that a girl's ma usually tells her about. Well, I ain't got no ma, so why don't you tell me? Well, yeah, Granny will do it when she comes back. Well, what if she don't get back before Sonny Drysdale comes? Then I won't know how to court and spark him. <laughs> you ain't supposed to court and spark him. That's what a feller does to a girl. How? What if he do? Well, he uh, gets himself all slicked up, shaves real close, shines his shoes, puts on a stiff collar and a clean shirt. And, and he goes to calling on the girl toting a nice, big, store-bought box of candy. Ah, diggity dog, I'm gonna like courting and sparking. <laughs> it's only the courting part. I ain't got to the sparking yet. What's that like, Paul? Well, uh, she invites him to come in the parlor and sit. And they usually sit on the sofa or something, him on one end, her on the other. Well, then, uh, he goes to carefully, little at a time, scooching down to where he's within reaching distance of the girl. Sonny Drysdale going to do that to me? He might. <laughs> and when he does, that's when a girl has got to be careful. Don't you worry, Paul. If that rascal goes to reaching for my candy, I'll knock him clean off of that sofa. <laughs> Sonny, you sea beast. You creature from the blue lagoon. Now, now, my dear, don't you fling yourself overboard because I'm not worth it. No, don't. My dear, my dear, my... Oh, well, there were too many girls aboard anyway. We were beginning to miss. Sonny, are you decent? Not me. The devil. Come in. Beautiful. Mother! Girls are beautiful. Boys are handsome. Dashy! Debonair! <laughs> You're right. I'm beautiful. <laughs> well, I just spoke to Jed Clavett. He's expecting you to call this afternoon. Maybe take Ellie Mae for a drive. Tomorrow, they're expecting you for Thanksgiving dinner. Two days? Gee, stepdad, no girl has ever been exposed to me for two consecutive days. <laughs> what? Well, it may be unleashing forces too powerful to control. Yes, what if the kind of girl gets serious about Sonny? Well, we'll celebrate with the finest champagne money can buy. Oh, no. My baby's not ready for marriage. <laughs> Margaret, he's 35 years old. I am not. I was a leap year baby. No, I, I don't know about this nonsense. Now, you climb into that expensive sports car I bought you and go calling on that girl or so help me out. No, Margaret, please. Sonny has never been exposed to violence. Even when he was born, I gave the doctor strict orders that he was not to be spanked. But it's not too late to start. Now, are you going or aren't you? I'm going. I am going. You want me to go along? 
No, Mother, dear. No! <laughs> Want meat, Mr. Sonny? Why, no trouble at all. <laughs> there you are. Whack off as much as you want. Mr. Gant, he's back from the supermarket. What <laughs> carnation is that? That is what you call a shopping cart. There's a sign down at the supermarket that says, take one. So Granny did. <laughs> but there's Indian givers. They wanted me to give it back when we were leaving. <laughs> she didn't do it. Did you, Granny? You're darn tootin'. Oh, they sweet as honey when you first come in. But they give you a heap of trouble when you start to leave. What kind of trouble, Granny? Well, first you stand in a line with a kind of a gate. And at that gate, there's a woman. She looks at what you've got. Then she starts to push a lot of little knobs. And bells start to ring. And a drawer pops open with a lot of money in it. No, mm, <laughs> Then she tells you how much money to give her. She says to me, she says, That'll be twenty-eight, twenty-five, And I says, now you make up your mind. Is it 28 or is it 25? And she says to me, she says, that's 28, 25. Well, I seen I wasn't getting no place with her. So I give her the benefit of the doubt and I plunk down 28. A quarter and three pennies. <laughs> I reckon that pleased her. You'd have thought so, but not her. As I started through the gate, she says, hold on. Madam, you're short. I said, maybe so. But I'm big enough to take you on. Fanny was getting right mad. Well, you'd have got mad too, Jeff. And you get after Ellie about running around in boys' pants. You should see those women in that supermarket. He was wearing boys' pants, was he? Some of them were in their underpants. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to get Jethro out of there. Thank you. And I did too. I dingy, they didn't stop us. <laughs> Good for you, Granny. that weird-looking vehicle belong to you? No, sir. Can you move it? I reckon so. Please do. It completely spoils the effect of my imported 190. Well, what should I do with it? Oh, I don't care. Just get it out of sight. Hide it somewhere. Yes, sir. Sonny Drysdale to see Miss Clampett. Oh, come in, come in. Jethro? Trying to find out how to drive this thing. What for? Who is it? Sonny Drysdale. He asked me to get it out of sight for him. <laughs> All right. Just trying to surprise Ellie. Where do you say put it? Well, he just said hide it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, let's accommodate him. You take the front end, I'll take the back. We'll put it back of them bushes yonder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't a box of candy, Granny? It sure is, honey. All tied up with ribbon. Oh, Ellie. Child, you are just beautiful. Shall I sprinkle some vanilla extract on you? Rebecca? No, I better not. Sometimes that drives them wild. <laughs> I didn't get to talk to you about Carton and Spark. Oh, that's all right, Granny. Paul told me. Oh, all right, now you follow me. Don't be nervous. Here she is, Mr. Drysdale. Thank you. You're beautiful. Divine. Never mind me. Say something nice to her. <laughs> Hold it just a moment. What a vision you are. What a picture you make. From your golden hair down to your... 
Is that for me? Yes, yes it is. Bet you I can guess what it is. Try. It's something sweet. Exquisitely sweet. Something yummy? The yummiest. Something all girls like? Ha <laughs> ha, you guessed it, it's me. <laughs> you can sleep with it under your pillow. <laughs> Want to come into the pile? What are we going to do in there? Talk about the birds and the bees. Well, Scooby, do <laughs> you peasant girls don't beat around the bush? Miss Clampett, my lips long to taste your lovely hand. <laughs> oh. hey, why did you throw him? That rascal was fixing to bite me. Rooster <laughs> toy. My car, where is it? Oh, it's did good, ain't it? Ain't nobody can find where we put it. <laughs> Big oaf, I'll destroy you. <laughs> by the Drysdales. Let's go feud them. Oh, now. Why, we could whoop them with one hand tied behind us. We ain't got no cause to whoop them, Granny. No cause. Why, just yesterday, I went over there to the Drysdales to borrow a cup of possum fat. And that butler fella that lives over there, he says to me, you wouldn't pull my leg, would you? And I said, well, one good turn deserves another. Stick it up here and I'll give it a yank. <laughs> and do you know that he slammed the door right in my face? Let's go. Now, hold on, hold on. Now, we're all going to calm down. We'll go next door, talk to Mr. Drysdale. We'll straighten this whole thing out. Come on. There, there. Mother's baby is going to be all right. <laughs> this is just a dreadful experience, darling. Dreadful? Margaret, <laughs> buddy. Here. They followed me. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Where's Sonny? Here I am. <laughs> well, we've straightened out the misunderstanding, and now these people have something they want to say. Yes, Sonny, I, I reckon this is all my fault. I'm sorry I wasn't to the door like a proper paw had ought to be. I'm sorry I throwed you, Sonny. And I sure do thank you for that nice picture you gave me. And I'm sorry you hurt your hand hitting me, Sonny. Now, and me and Jeff real was sorry that we hid the automobile. We towed it back over and set it down in front of your house. Well, I can't think of nothing I'm sorry for. But we sure would be proud to have you all come and take Thanksgiving vittles with us. Sonny and I wouldn't think of passing up an invitation like that. We'll be there, all of us. <laughs> Let us say grace. We sure have got a lot to be thankful for, Lord. We got good health, good neighbors, good food. Jethro's going to school. Ellie's got a feller. I guess everything is just about fine. We sure do thank you. Amen. 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 Well, Jethro, hand out the pot passers and the meat stabbers. And let's get at it. <laughs>
This has been a Filmways presentation. Eighth Man DVD.